murder in the second degree of felony, that the defendant be imprisoned in a state prison for the term prescribed by law, which is 15 years to life in prison. Imagine if somebody fractured your skull, broke your bones, bashed your face in, and then threatened to kill you. But you managed to kill them first. Self-defense, right? Mm -hmm. But what if your attacker was your own husband? Brenda Klubine spent 26 years in prison for killing her abusive husband. After years of black eyes and skull fractures and broken limbs, a jury decided she was guilty of murder and ripped her away from her young son. When my jury convicted me for second degree murder, I knew then that it was over for me and my son. The judge said, I have to recommend your son to the California Department of Adoption. He was not quite three years old. Look at that precious child. His life shattered, his mom's life shattered. Finally, just two years ago, after a quarter of a century behind bars, Brenda was given her precious freedom back. It was all meant to be right at this point in time because I have my son, and my freedom is just a short distance away now. I'm ordering her release forthwith. Good luck to you, ma'am. It is an honor to welcome Brenda Klubein. You are my hero for never giving up and for devoting your life to helping Americans understand what domestic violence is really like as opposed to our stereotypes in our head. Take us back to that fateful moment when you, Brenda, decided to stand up for yourself. Well, first of all, I want to say that it's an honor and a pleasure for me to be on this show because I think it's so important that we educate not only the victims, but our community. In one night, in a matter of seconds, I was forced beyond my control to defend my life. My husband said, ask for my wedding rings because he said without them, tomorrow they won't be able to identify your body. So from there I knew that I wasn't gonna get out of there that night. And I knew that I was never gonna see my son's face that I wouldn't have that chance. So my husband had been drinking from a wine bottle and I picked it up and I hit him over the head with a wine bottle. I didn't even intend to kill him. It was just, I just wanted to knock him out and leave. And the ultimate result, unfortunately, was him dying. Now, couldn't you convince a jury? I mean, you've convinced me right now. I'm sure you had medical records of broken limbs and all the abuse maybe photos. How come the jury didn't see that you are the victim here? Well, unfortunately, back then, there was no, there was no allowing battered women's syndrome to be admissible in court. And so because of that, they just kept saying that the victim wasn't on trial. So I had no chance. But because of years later, once in prison and starting my group, we got that law changed so that another person would never have to live the nightmare I lived and my sisters as well. Your little boy was three years old when, and he's such a precious child, I saw those photos, when you were ripped away from him, he was almost 30 when you finally got out of prison. So what was that like? How did you reconnect? Well, you know, it's getting to know each other. We're still in that process now. But he's an amazing young man, and I have two wonderful grandsons. And we don't, it's not about what was, it's about what's ahead of us and where we can build our life from here and well, how I we get, can try to heal. I want to get to this big issue because it's so important. So many people, when they hear about domestic violence, they go, why don't these women just leave? And there's some judgment yeah. behind that question. In reality, it is never that simple. Here's another clip from this documentary. Why doesn't she just leave? That's the question we always ask. Let's think about the question some more. It assumes that leaving stops his violence, when actually leaving escalates the violence. 
We have a term for it. It's called separation assault. It happens so often that when she tries to leave, he intensifies his violence. In fact, she is at 75% increased risk for being killed after she leaves. So, Brenda, have people ever asked you, why didn't you just leave? What do you tell them? Absolutely, they've asked me. And that is because people don't get it. They don't understand. They don't understand what it's like to live in fear 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They don't understand what the threats are and that they, when they say they're going to kill you, your children, your friends, your family members, the guilt and the shame that goes along with it. But in my case, I did leave. I left 11 times. I got a restraining order. I filed charges. But the problem was is that my husband would hunt me down, and in two to five days, every time I left, he would find me. Oh, my and gosh. so there was nowhere for me to go. Hang on. We're going to get to more of this after the break and take your calls. There were times when I begged him, just stop. Just stop. Why can't you stop? There were times when he was suicidal and at his lowest, and I cradled him in my arms. And I told him he was a good man, would get through it. That was a clip from Sin by Silence. Fascinating documentary, moving documentary about women behind bars for killing their abusive husbands. And my guest, Brenda Klubine, served 26 years because she defended herself against a husband who beat her to a pulp and threatened to kill her. Is that fair? Of course not. Dolores, Indiana, your question or thought, ma'am? Yes, I can live. I have lived through what some of these women, and I can agree with it quite, quite so. My husband beat me lifeless three or four times, and he would tell me he, would, he was going to kill me. He would steal my children, and he... He would take me and he would kidnap me and everything else. And this is before they had any child, you know, felony or wife beating or anything. But anyway, I would hide knives, pack them in my purse. I was a waitress and I, I put in my mind, it come to the point where it was going to be me or him. And it got to that point, I had knives hid all through the house, and I would pack them. And one day, he went to, he was going to lay me out again, and I stabbed him. And when I stabbed him, I meant to kill him within my heart. I truly did. Thank God I didn't, because I would still be sitting in prison. Yeah, well, Dolores, thank you for sharing your very honest story. Uh, I want to ask Brenda Klubine, did you try to protect yourself in the same way did you did you how did you try to get away from this guy that night or in general in general um i left multiple times and when i left it would be when he'd be gone because that would be my only safe time to leave then he wasn't pinning me down on the floor or pummeling me or whatever was happening at the time and when he was gone I feel that I felt that I'd have a safe bit of time that I could get out pack some things and go with your but kid the unfortunate with your child yes absolutely absolutely but unfortunately I don't care where I went and the fact that I didn't tell anybody where I went he would find me I had six jobs in three months he got me fired from each and every one of them so that just proved everything that he said about me never being able to survive without him, that I'd never make it on my own, became very real for me because I couldn't make it. So I kept going back. Why do you think he was abusing you? What was wrong with him? What was his psychosis? Honestly, I don't know why he was abusing me. I believe that he had his own issues. I don't think that there's any excuse for anyone ever to put their hands on anyone. I know there is no excuse. I think that he used, he used to say that I was upsetting him. I was making him angry if I just did things right. And Brenda, I believe those things. We are out of time. We want you to come back. We love you. We're so glad you're out. Don't miss tomorrow's issues. Thank I'm talking. You.